All right. Uh, just to show hands again, I, I, I want to see what I'm dealing with here. We have a bunch of people. That ever, how many people have tablets? So only a few that don't. This is very unusual. I'm glad. I'm happy. Maybe things are changing, and that's the, the way, or just this class. Uh, the people that raise their hands, how many of them feel they're using the tablet to its full potential? One. I'm going to have a hard time with you then. I just will say. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully today I'll teach you something. <clears throat> I know this, uh, the, the course design on this was like an intermediate class. I'm going to start from basic and go into intermediate, so that'll cover the basic people that uh, have, don't even have a tablet, let you understand what's the best one for you. Uh, i kind of go through uh, Wacom's product line real quick. Uh, you have Bamboo, which within the last two years, they just changed the, uh, the name from Intuos to Intuos Pro. And then everything that has the bamboo name now has no pressure. So that's more of our stylus line. So we have stylus for the phones and stuff. So yeah, if you have a product that has bamboo that you bought recently, again, it was kind of a change for Wacom about two years ago. They, they changed the name. And it was to confuse me, confuse all the customers at the time. But now it, it does make a lot of sense. So if bamboo is in the title for their new products, it pretty much means there's no pressure. It's just a, a stylus that's used for you know, your phones, your, your iPads, your tablets, that type of stuff. We then go to Intuos. Intuos is the old bamboo. It's our low-end consumer line. Uh, it has half the pen pressure of the Intuos Pro. It's good for a beginner, somebody who's looking to just edit a few images now and then. Uh, then you go up to Intuos Pro. That's primarily what I'll be demoing on today. This is a Intuos Pro. This is the medium size. They come in small, medium, and large. Uh, for most of you, imagine most of the people in here who. Photoshop, is that the primary function? Is there anybody who's not using Photoshop? I heard the one with Painter, both. but use both. So primarily Photoshop, right? So going back to the Intuos line. So the Intuos line has three sizes, a small, medium, and large. Uh, medium, since most of you are Photoshop, is the size I'd probably recommend. That's this one right here. It's great for both travel and at home because it'll fit. It's about the same size as most 15-inch uh, laptops. You don't have to you know, sacrifice having the smaller one, which when I go over absolute position, you'll understand a little bit more about the difference in the sizes. Uh, the only person I really recommend the large to, it might be somebody who's a natural media painter, somebody who's doing like Corel, uh, Corel paint, Corel draw. Uh, just anything that's going to uh, be something natural media that want to draw with those large brush strokes. Our next line, I have the, the baby of it here. This is the Cintiq. Uh, this one's a 13. We also have, I think, on the display, I believe we have the 20. Uh, two on display outside, but there's a 13, 22, and a 24 currently. 24 is a monster. I can never demo that anymore because it's about 90 pounds, and I basically said I refuse to drive that around, to, not drive it around, but to bring it around New York anymore. It just They'd always send me to the service <laughs> elevators and everything. I couldn't do it, especially by myself. But the 22 is not so bad. 22 is about 50 pounds, and this little one I just fit in my backpack when I came here. So 13 is great. Just again, different sizes for different situations. If it's something you're going to travel with, definitely the 13. If you're looking for inside an office, uh, the 22 or the 24. Just depending on a lot of, on the color and how you want it to, to work. The 22 actually rotates where the 24 can go down into your lap. So there's two different designs. And uh, if somebody has specific questions on those, again, I can take them at the end. I'll get into the Intuos now. I said absolute positioning. I'm going to cover what that means. Because I basically have. Three, there's three rules that I have for a tablet. Uh, there's the absolute positioning. Once you understand that, it really helps you understand the tablet. And we'll see how many people in the room have done it. So I'm going to try and stay tethered here. I have my battery didn't charge enough yet. But when I mean absolute positioning, if you look on the screen to where I am on the tablet, wherever I am on the tablet is where I am on the screen. So these lit corners are the corners of the tablet. I mean the corners of the tablet, the corners of the screen on the tablet. So as I take my pen and I go to the top right, I'm in the top right. Bottom right, top left. If I want to go center, I'm in the center. That's important to know only because that's what's going to drive you crazy too. Or at least, at least drive you crazy as far as, uh, I always tell people it's not a learn, this tablet's not a learning curve. You know how to use this. It's an unlearning curve. And that unlearning curve is the mouse. You're going to try and do mouse things on here and that's what's going to drive you crazy. Now those. I think three quarters of the room has tablets already, so hopefully you're past this point, but I'll still show it for my new people. If I'm down here and I want to get up to file, if this is my screen, file's up here. Well, 
for the new people, you're going to try and do this. You're going to try and push the screen across, and eventually you'll get up there after you've pushed like 10 times saying, why is this thing not working? When really all you had to do was go to that area and then tap down on file. So if you look at it, what I'm doing is I'm going from here. I don't care if my cursor is all the way down the bottom right-hand corner. I'm just going to the top left into file, and I'm tapping down. That's absolute position. It means, unlike a mouse, first thing I do with a mouse, I grab it, and I kind of shake the mouse to see where I am. I don't need to do that with a tablet. This is my screen. I know where I go, and I'm just tapping on that tablet exactly where I need to be. Now, that's my first rule. My second rule is always know where the tip of this pen is. The tip of the pen is your mouse click. So even though this, this pen has two more, three more buttons on it, actually, it has a dual switch here, a forward and a back button, and it has an eraser in the back. So you have four buttons on the pen. The front one, though, the, the pen itself is the most important. That's your mouse click. And again, when you're new to tablets, people will start, they're not realizing what's going on. They're trying to like click these buttons, and they're wondering what's going on, why it's popping. Every time this tip touches the tablet, no matter how hard or light, it's a mouse click. So when I want to go to file, I go above file. Now, if you look, I'll kind of show around the room. I'm not touching on the tablet. I'm about a quarter of an inch away, and it's still working. All right, so what I do is I just go above file, and then I tap down. Also, make sure you tap and release. Don't tap and hold. If I tap and hold, I'll show you what will happen. If I tap and above that, now it starts to open. I'm like, wait, why is it doing that? And that's because with the mouse, you wouldn't hold your button down, move around, and then let go. It's, a, it's the same thing, but again, because you're not used to it, or you're not thinking in that terms, you start doing that. And these are the things that, like, that definitely frustrate people, because now they're trying to scoot across the screen, they're clicking on things, and when they, they, they let go, it's, it's like, oh, what's going on? Why, why is it trying to close on me? Oh, I actually closed it. That's why, though. It's because of that absolute position and then the click. And then the third rule, I guess, is just um, once you have the pen down, always hold the pen like a pen. And what I mean by that is exactly. This is, I hold it with these buttons in here. Sometimes I'll turn them underneath. It just depends on what way. A lot of lefties, they scrunch up on the pen. They can't hold it either way. You can actually disable these buttons in our driver or pull the button out altogether. And I'll get to that in, uh, near the end. I'm going to go into the driver area, and I'll show you a lot where that can be done. But the big thing is just not to hit those buttons, especially not at first, because at first, I think the default is right-click and double-click. So now you're going to start right-clicking where you want to tap down. So when you're holding the pen, you hold it comfortably. You rest your hand on the tablet. You tap, your hand's not going to do anything. Even though this has touch, I just turned it off so it doesn't. Uh, these, all our tablets, by the way, I skipped that before. They all have touched. We, don't, we used to come with a mouse. Now it's just a giant tablet. You can pinch and zoom. You can do all that. But the big thing is with the pen. So you take the pen down. Your hand's not going to do anything. Now, if I had touch on and I put my hand down, it might move to that area. A lot of that has to come with just how you work. If you come pen first, you'll never have that problem. If you can't stop from not coming pen first, just do what I just did now. Just turn touch off. The default is the top left button. Touch on, touch off. You can change. By the way, all these buttons are all programs. Uh, they can all be changed, and they're program specific. So when you jump from program to program, they can all be changed. You go from Photoshop to Illustrator to Painter. They can all be different buttons. Uh, to tell people, you know, to really show that off, I'll step out on. This is my demo machine, but at home, when I'm working. I jump into my web browser, and these become like my first name, my last name. I mean, they literally can be anything you want them to be. When my, my computer just boots up, off on the desktop, these launch my application. So I can launch Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, the web browser, right from there. And then as I get in the program, they all change. Just by ho hovering my hand over them, they'll pop up and show you what they're set to. That's called our heads up display. And which, you know, just by moving my hand, you can see it's changing what button I'm on. So it lets me know without having to look down what button I'm on. Eventually, you get to know, and then it, doesn't, it won't come up because you'll go down and just hit the button. That's our radial menu. That's additional programmable keys that can be for any application. So as you're in your application, you hit the radial menu button. It's going to come up, and you can set that to uh, anything your heart desires. So now, if you look, 
how many how many shortcuts do the average people in here use? I'm gonna, I'll just go with numbers. More than four? More than eight? More than 16? I lost you all there, okay. More, everybody that was less than eight, you can do it all right here. So without doing anything, you can do it all here. Some of the best shortcuts, let me just close that, are built right in. I'll show you. Uh, this is a four position wheel, so I can scroll. Now I have two of them being skipped. I usually skip um, cycle through layers and rotate. Don't use them, so I'd rather, I, I had to set them to skip so I can just hit the button and go from brush to zoom. So now I'm on my zoom. I can zoom in and out just by rotating like that. And if I jump to brush, I cannot change the brush size that quickly. So that right there is, you know, that's like four of your eight shortcuts probably. Now your, your, your control, your alt, your shift, if I hold this down, you'll see most of them there. Space, you know, X, the option key. They're all right there. Uh, what I also do, this is something I change, it's not a default. The back button on here, I do is Control Alt Z, or Option Apple Z. That's step backwards. Most people don't realize now, Photoshop's the only one I know that you have to hold Option Apple Z down to undo. Well, not to undo, to step back. Photoshop, what it does, if you undo, if you do Control Z, or, op or um, Option or Apple Z, do it again, it actually undoes what you undid. That makes it, so you go in a loop. So you do a line, you control Z, you undo it, you do it again, it puts it back. So to, to step backwards, you have to do Option Apple Z or Control Alt Z. And that's how you get that undo. So I have that set just into the back of my pen so I can very easily go and undo. You can do, that shortcut could have been here, could have been, could have been in that radio menu. I could have pulled the radio menu up and then done a shortcut in there. So for most of you, I, I mean, pretty much everyone stopped at 16, but at eight, you're here. If you need more, you can pop up this wheel. It gives you eight more, and you can have sub-menus. I don't know if I have a sub one under any of those. Uh, no, but each one of those can be a sub-menu. So theoretically, you could have every shortcut in the program available to you. It's just a matter of how far do you want to go. I don't recommend going more than two sub-menus down because that's two clicks. So now in two clicks, you could have 64 shortcuts. I don't know anybody in the room that probably uses more than 64 shortcuts anyway, so you would, you would be good with that. So we've gone over absolute positioning, the, the pen, the distance of the pen, again, it's about a quarter of an inch away. Only tap down when you want something to happen, and hold the pen like a regular pen. The only thing I didn't really get to, and this is more towards that, is always hold it like this. What I'll catch a lot of people doing, they'll be here, you know, they're doing some work over here, and they'll, they'll scoot over to that, and next thing you know, they're holding the pen like this. How accurate do you think that is? If I gave you a regular pen, would you be able to draw too good holding it like that? I, I would say most of you couldn't. So you want to keep it down to where you have your accuracy. Your accuracy is when you hold it like a pen and work it like a pen. Now, what we've gone over so far is really just uh, how the tablet works and basic navigation. Now, you can see it on screen, but I really didn't point it out too much. This tablet, the, uh, the Pro, has 2,048 levels of pressure. So I can use that in any of the applications that support it. Photoshop's a huge one. So I'm going to go in. And right now, if I just click here, <coughs> this brings up your brush panel. And in this brush panel, you can see what it's set to. Photoshop also, in the uh, I think it was six and above. So anybody who's got six or above, they added these two buttons, which give you the two most common. One is going to be uh, opacity, and one is line size. But you can go in here just to see what's on. Right now, I have let's see myself. I have shape dynamics, which is is size. So if I go over here and I start drawing this, I'll be able to control the size of that brush just by how hard I'm pressing. You see how it goes from thin to thick? Now I can go, I'll turn that off. I'll go down to transfer. And I'll set these both to pen pressure. And now I should have opacity. So now I can go change my opacity from 1% to 100% just by how hard I press. That right there, that brush, is now the, the brush I use 90% of the time I'm in Photoshop. 
when I get into my demos, you'll see and you'll understand why. But right there, that, that power right there is why I do it. Now, if you look, there's, a, there's tons of other things you can do in here. Uh, scattering, you know, it's neat effect if you want to make clouds or something. Uh, let's add that to pen pressure and pump up the scatter effect. Now I could just, by how hard I press, I can bring that around. There's texture, dual brush, if you want to go back and forth from colors. But there's all the stuff you can play with. The two most powerful, obviously, are the line size and the opacity. And that's why they put them up here in shortcuts. Just be careful with the shortcuts. A little tip I'll give you. If I turn that on, now I have line size. Even if I uncheck this, I'm still going to have line size. And that's because this is kind of an over, this overrides whatever is in the panel. And that can get confusing to people if they do that and they get in here and they, oh, wait a second, I turned that off. Why is it not turning off? And that's why. So if these are checked, they override anything in the panel. So that one's size, this one should be opacity, same thing. So if you look, transfer is checked. It's unchecked now, it should be off, but it's still on. That's because these override it. So as, as beautiful and as fun as they are, they can be a little... Uh, Which is better to use It's just, it's preference. If you want to get a little bit more into the, into the specs and touch it, like with transfer, it only puts on uh, opacity. I actually like to have flow also, I put them both. I feel like I get a little bit more of a smoother transition. But for right now, I would start with just the top until you get used to it, and then you can start to go into the control panel and get a lot more in depth. Let's, is there any questions on how the operation, like how the tablet actually works? If not, I'll go into a few demos and then we'll get into some uh, more of the advanced, intermediate to advanced stuff. Is it gets a little drier, but those of you that know the product will understand that more. And now I'll get into a little bit of the wow stuff. It should be a little more fun. And I'll do my best. And look in this way, look in that way. I'll try. Uh, start all the way to the left. <coughs> all right. With this image, this is actually uh, one of our co-workers. Is, uh, that's his great-great-grandfather or something. Uh, he was a singer. He ran for vice president. I don't know. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of accomplishments. But he pulled these pictures in. He was trying to retouch these images. So with this one, it was just a real easy way to do it with a Gaussian blur. All I have to do is I'm going to add a copy this layer. I'm going to try that again. There we go. Copy this layer. Add a filter on it. I'm going to do a blur and a Gaussian blur. Now, what I'm going to do is pump it up and watch until it's almost like, you know, that would be I would consider ridiculous. I wouldn't want it that blurred. But that's where I'm going to put it for right now. <coughs> because what I'm going to do is add in a mask. Now, everybody in the room understand what a mask <coughs> is? Yes, no? All right, a couple of heads, I've, yes? I've heard of it. I, I, forget. <laughs> I forget what you do with it. All right, let's, put it, let's explain it. The best way I can is real simple. A, a mask is just, I'm putting a piece of glass on top. And I can now change or affect that, that effect. So I'm going to change. I now have that Gaussian blur is on a mask, and that mask, by filling it with black, it's actually going to, black's going to apply, white's gonna, uh, black's going to hide, and white's going to reveal. So I'm going to fill the entire thing with black. Like a stencil. Uh, I guess. Set a foreground color, I'm going to switch to black, and you'll see I'm back to square one. I have, I have basically erased everything because black hides the whole thing. By using that that brush that we talked about earlier, I'm going to grab my brush. I'm just going to check and make sure it's the same thing. Yes, I'm sitting here with an opacity type brush. That's perfect. Let me just even pick a different one. Let's do it from scratch. Go to my transfer. Set that on. Set these both to pen pressure. So we're good to go. Now, just by how hard I brush that in, I'm now going to take that blur and I'm going to start brushing it in. I'm going to change my brush size a little bit. And I'm going to brush that in here. Maybe get rid of this right here. Raise the brush a little bigger here. Oh, too much. 
just kind of brush that lightly again. By how hard I press, I'm only applying a little bit of that blur. If I push real hard, you'll see I'll get that, and that's not what we're looking to do. So I'm going to undo that. Just going to keep, you know, go back over here, brush that in a little bit, maybe lower this, push a little harder on there, a little bit right there. And for the face, I'm going to zoom in. Space bar for my shortcuts. Oops. Now on the face, I'm just going to push just a little bit. And I keep, what I'm doing, it's a little trick that I do. I just keep tapping so I can get as little as I need without distorting it. Let's back it out. So now, in a matter of you know, seconds instead of minutes, I've gone from an image like this to a repaired image like that. And if I want, I can do some more, too. I'm looking. I can see it better on the big screen. So, you know, I can go back in there, push a little more here if I want. You could take the bags out from under his eyes. Eh, if I wanted to. I don't know how much I want to actually change the image. A little more there. It looked like a little water damage there. Well, I think you guys get the, the idea. Let's see. How's that looking? Much better. I think I could do a little more right here. There we go. All right, with these cars, I thought it was uh, great. They were all, all red, though. I was like, ah, it's kind of nice, nice old cars, but I want to change the color of a couple of them. So messing around that I also didn't want to lose any of the, the shadows and highlights in the actual paint. I said, how, how can I do this? You know what? I'm going to play with a U and saturation level. When you use these up here, these are like kind of quick selections, it'll automatically throw a mask in. I'll do, this, I'll do a second one without using it up here so you can see, especially for anybody who's using older versions of Photoshop. But basically, just by taking this dial, bringing it around, I'm going to make, let's say, I like the orange. We're going to make an orange car there. Looks the same up there. Now, what I've done is I've turned them all orange and I've changed the sky. I've changed everything. But again, I'm not worried about it because I'm going to go to that same thing where I have my mask now. I'm going to fill it. I'm back to the beginning. All I have to do now is by taking my pen in the black with white selected, I can go in there, zoom in a little bit change my brush size, and now I should be able to change the color of the car just by pushing down. Now with something like this, because I want it to be the same, maybe I will just go and turn opacity off, and then use it strictly as an even take, um, change the brush on this one, go to a hard, hard edge brush, just so it's, it's better when I get right to the edges. Let's see how that works. Yeah, so now it's going to be a matter of just coming in here and painting it in. Now anywhere where I go over, it sticks out pretty much, especially on the metal. Not a big deal. We can go in and just use the eraser. Some of this comes to the fact that I'm also like three feet away from this as I'm doing this. Instead of using the eraser, wouldn't it be quicker to switch to black? Same thing. They, no, no difference in that. I mean, a lot of times, too, is I'll switch the front of this to X. So, but the thing is, you see, the only reason it might be quicker on this is my eraser is this. So it's just a matter of how you want to do it. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is switch the front of this to X, which I'll do right now. I don't have it set that way, but because we're doing this, let me show you how easy it is. So instead of a right click, I'm going to change this to a keystroke make it X. We'll get into this later on. But now just by hitting the front, if I want to switch that back out, that's how quick it is. Now if I was using a Cintiq, it'd be even quicker. Because I'm working right on the image. See, right now I'm, I'm disconnected. 
and not only am I disconnected like you would be, but I'm actually over here drawing over there. Makes it a lot harder. Really, what I this is this would be the optimal situation. For demoing right now, I'm kind of like over here, or even you know, or in front of that screen would be great if I could unplug it, which maybe I'll do in a little bit, and then use it. But right now, I'd want to be here, and then drawing in front, you know, like this. The Cintiq now, I'm right on the image. So it just makes it even that much quicker. I'm gonna do this, just start to do this a lot faster. We're not, we're not going to print with this today, so. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody gets the idea, too. All right. Anything else major I need to do? I think that's the, the brunt of it. Maybe right here. Oh, we need to get down here. We can't leave that. I think that's good enough. So, oh, I covered up a light, so I just hit my X key and come right back. I want to do another one. I told you I would do two of them. I'll do it in a. So now. If I do it here, U in saturation, does the same thing, pulls it up, it's just not doing the shortcut for it. And maybe I'll make my next car pink. Do a guy car and a girl car. You know. All right, same thing. <coughs> Fill it with black. And make a nice pink car real quick. In those areas that I went a little over, just by hitting the X, I'll go and take it right out. So that one's a lot quicker because I didn't have all that detail I had to hit upon. But now I've changed two cars in the image. By doing it that way, I'm still keeping the like the reflections in the paint and everything <coughs> else. And it's just a nice, easy way. But look at how quickly. Even I mean, I, I obviously I could go a lot more detail to make it perfect. But getting about 95% of the way, I did that in a minute or so, imagine what that would be, take you with the mouse. I mean, you'd still be making the selection, and that's kind of what the whole point is. You're sitting there doing that selection where I'm already done with the project. And, and that's where you have to start switching from the mouse to the tablet. It's just start thinking, instead of selections, think of more mask and just paint around it and go. And a lot of people don't realize that you can do that. I'll even, uh, somebody mentioned the stamp tool before, right? Let's show that. What do I have to use the stamp tool? Oh, I know. Let's open one of these. I'm going to make a little digital collage here. So, can't use that one, no big deal. All right. Now, with the stamp tool, if I hold my finger over this, remember I just need uh, my Alt key or my Option key, which is right here. So I hold that down, and that's making my selection. So I'm just going to kind of tap him right between the eyes here. Why is that doing that? Oh, you mean you need to actually select the stamp tool. That'll help. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Recovering from a bad cold, so I hope you bear with me here. I'm just uh, second day back in the real world. All right, so now I hit my option key. And what do you know? When you have the tool selected, it works fine. All right, so I'm just going to select him right between the eyes. I'm going to go back to my collage. Now, if you look, I'm not even on that image. But see, you can see the circle already. It's showing me the preview of what's going to come. And before I hit Enter, I know I have to switch back to my brush. I didn't switch. I have a real hard brush right now. That's not going to look too good. So I'm going to pick a soft brush. Uh, I'm going to hit Transfer again so I get that opacity. I'm going to set these both to pen pressure. And now I should be able to just bring in, let's make my nice digital collage look like I have 
Maybe make that a little bigger. Bring some lion eyes in. Let's try something else. Uh, got a bear. Do the same thing. Tap them between the eyes, just so I know where I am. And I'm going to start to bring a bear in. Do I have a tiger? I'm, that's <laughs> lion, lion. No, no tiger. We could just we could just say the other one's a tiger. See if this one works. No, that one open. We'll take this one. He'll be a tiger. We'll just say it. Why not? And I'll bring him in down here. So just by how hard I press, I'm bringing it in, making it look, you know, a little bit. I want to bring it more, I push a little harder. But I wanted to bring it so that it would just show up a little, for kind of a little digital collage in the sky there. Lions, tigers, and bears. Somebody can say, oh, I was waiting, somebody has to say it, right? You know? But again, because of the power of the pen, I can just bring that in. I didn't have to go and select them out. I didn't have to go and change opacity. You know, a lot of times you want to bring that in and make it look like something that's there, but not. You'd have to go in and change the opacity on each layer. I did each one of those, just bringing them in and how hard I pressed on the pen. All right, with this image, I mean, not a bad photo, but I really want her to pop a lot more. So if I can darken that background up, I can have her pop a lot more. And if you look, it's, you know, there's a little bit more light in the top, obviously, than there is down in here and in the right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll add a layer here. I'll look at levels. It might be an easy way to do this. Grab my levels layer. Now what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the background, not worrying about the image itself. I just want to darken it up. So just by doing that, pulling that over, uh, maybe I'll even go a little more. I'll say OK to that. But now, again, I have my, my mask, which it put in automatically. That's, new, that's newer to CC. So again, those of you that have the older versions, you'd have to add that mask uh, yourself. But it's not a big deal. It's just another, another button. Fill it with black. Now I'm back to square one. Well, not square to one, but now I have this nice mask that I can darken up my background with. Just by taking my white which I'll switch with the X key. Come in here, adjust my brush size. Whoops. Now what I didn't do is change my brush back. Right now I'm sitting on the brush with no opacity. So I laid that down as, as dark as that mask was. I don't want that. I want to sit there and be able to hit transfer and set that to pen pressure. So now, depending on how hard I press, will allow only a little bit of that to come through. So now I press a little bit, and I'm just getting a little bit. I'm going to push harder back here, because this was a lot lighter. As I come over here, not so much. It was already a little bit darker. Right here, let me push a little harder right there. I come around. Not too much there, but on this fence, I want that wood to really shine, to really darken up. So I'm going to push it real hard on the wood, and if I'm going to do it there, I might as well do it down here. Now, in a matter of you know, a few seconds, I've gone from an image that was pretty good to an image that I hope she pops a lot more. If I really want to get into it too, I could add another, let's see. We'll do a second one. Shirt's too bright. Shirt's too bright? All right, we can bring that down if you want. It is too bright. Again, we can, we, can go, we can have fun with this all day. I don't want to waste too much, though. But I'm uh, going to pop. Let's see. Do it real quick for you.
that a little better? Mm -hmm. All right. And then, let's see if we can do this with the levels. We might be able to. I'm gonna pop those eyes just a little bit. Why not? There we go. So now, I mean, it's a few few changes, but again, what did it take me? A minute, two minutes? I don't know. I wasn't timing it, but I'm sure we could. We can go back to that videotape later and find out how long. But I went from you know an image again, image that wasn't so bad, to one that hopefully my change, your change, and then a little trick to the eyes, and I have something where you know now she really pops. Shirt looks better. And her eyes, her eyes really glow out there, show a nice pop there. But the whole point again is just how easy it is to quickly do that. I'm doing this all on a regular tablet, and I'm not, I haven't made a selection yet. Everything's just drawing around, around the stuff. All right, let's get into uh, some of the actual settings of the tablet and show you where some of the real power can come in. Now, I'm using this on a Mac today. So in a Mac, it's in your System preferences, Wacom tablet. If, uh, if you have a PC, it's just start all programs, Wacom tablet, same thing. It, once you're in the preference file, it looks identical. Now, a lot of people are afraid. They, they either, like, here's just to get a feel from the room. I know 75% of you have tablets. How many use the control panel all the time or have used it? Not often, so only a handful of you, and that's what we see all the time. And there's so much in here that can make your life a lot easier, especially to do with the, the settings on the, the uh, presets. So just to bring you through this, I'll show you how this works. And it looks like I have enough battery. Let's see. Give this a try, see if it works. There we go. So now I can walk around the room if I want. So. I have the tablet. Oh, by the way, they all come with wireless kits. <laughs> no, another new thing for you. Intuos Pro comes with a wireless kit built in. So uh, in the, if you had Intuos 5, you can actually, it was an option that you could get. Right. Not a big deal. It was like $30 or so. You yeah, could do it. it. OK, you got it. In the Intuos Pro now, with the next version, we actually give it with the wireless kit. So Wait, yeah, well, we did it now. So they, we fixed it. I apologize if you, you bought one before. but. With the wireless kit in there, it's just a little dongle. The dongle goes in the PC. So now I'm here. I can show you. The top line is what tablet you have installed. So actually, by looking at that screen, I don't need my glasses anymore. That'll help. I keep taking them on, off, on, off. If you had more than one tablet, or like you had a Cintiq in a tablet, they would show up on the top line. So for most people, this top line is all you need. You don't need to worry about anything else. The next line shows your functions, the touch, and your pen. You click on each one for when you want to change something. So the big, the primary one is the function. So I click, I click the functions. And then you won't have, if you haven't used it before, you're not going to have anything there. Those I added. You're going to have just all other. That's showing you what all my settings are. It's graphical. It points right to it. And it shows you what all the settings are. Now, the best way to do this is to just click, have the program you want to adjust open much easier that way because if it's open like right now I have Photoshop open if I hit this plus key it comes up with everything that I can pick so I'm, I'm gonna pretend I do it I've already got it selected if I hit OK now it'll pop up I'll hit cancel just because boom there it is we'll pretend I didn't have it already so there's Photoshop already added now I can change all these settings so like right down here radio menu if I don't want that I'm gonna change uh, let's change this one to radio menu and I'm going to change, we'll make this the space bar. Now I need the keyboard to be able to do that. So I'll come over here. I'll just put a space in. 
and I'll just type in space here. That's just so I can see, I just know what it is. Hit OK. And I'm going to change this one to a keystroke. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to make it Option Apple Z, which is step back. Same one I put in my pen, but it just shows you the power that you can have it anywhere. So I've changed that now so that when I'm in here, in Photoshop, I go in here. If I hover over this, my settings will pop up. And now that's my space bar, and that's my step back. So all these little drawings I just did, I can just step there and move them just by clicking there. That's the same thing I was doing with the back of the pen. It's all preference. It's up to what you want to do with it, though. So go back in here. That's the, exp that's the express keys. I go to touch ring. That's where I showed you. Remember, I, t I skipped these two. I showed you in Photoshop, in, every, in everything else. So right now, if I push this, it's going to show you everything. Brush size, rotate. And why is it doing that? Because the program I have selected is currently the system preferences, which is all other. If I go into Photoshop, this is what's going to happen. So if I click Photoshop and now click that, I only have two choices. See how that works? And I like that because especially we come with the default, the four things. I know very few people that use cycle layers. That would be so you can go in the layer and cycle up and down. I don't, me personally, I'll just go over to the layer and select the one I want. And the rotate the image, eh, you know what? I, well, see, it drives you crazy. I very rarely use that. So you know what? For the few times I'm going to use it, I turn it back on. The radial menu. This is that menu I told you. You can have per application. Now, if you look, if I click up here, you'll see, well, it would change if I, I had any changes. But uh, let's change one just so you can see. We'll make this uh, display toggle. All right. So now, as you see, as I go from program to program, that would have changed per application. But what's nice about this is that you can actually go in and change this to a submenu. Now, if you look over here, it'll do submenu. And then you have eight more shortcuts. That's what I was saying. You could have up to 64 shortcuts in two clicks. Because that whole first menu could be eight submenus if you really wanted to. And because it's program specific, it's not like you have to put in, like, you don't need a tab for Photoshop uh, shortcuts because it's only going to happen when you're in Photoshop. I mean, understand? I'm getting a lot of <laughs> blank stares. I'm like, I hope this explains this right. So you don't need to have, it's not like you do one menu with all the shortcuts. I've seen people do that, which they'll just have this. They'll, they won't have any uh, individual programs. They'll just have this, and they make a tab for Photoshop t shortcuts, a tab for Corel Painter shortcuts. You don't need to do that. Make each one individual. Just add the program, and then when you go into that program, you can adjust all those shortcuts to be just for that program. And that's what makes it so powerful, because now you've got eight, really like 12 shortcuts right here, because each one of these, you have a left and a right. So like that's bracket right or bracket left. So I'm actually adding two more to each one of these. And there's four there, so technically you could have uh, eight shortcuts, 16 shortcuts right here. But for the most part, most people use the eight buttons, and then they'll use uh, this to do one or two, maybe three functions. And then this wireless tab just shows you, you know, I got 50% power. That's how much it, it powered up. I was at none when I got here, and it's 50% in an hour. So you see it charges pretty quick. And this charge will last, even 50% now, will last me the whole day. Are the Cintiqs all wireless? No, Cintiqs are not wireless. Oh, that's the, this tablet. Yeah. You know, as of right now, the Cintiqs all have to be plugged in. All right, then you have, uh, so that's the function keys. Then you have your touch. Remember I told you the tablet also has touch. I can do gestures. There's the standard gestures, which you can click which ones you want on or off. These are all the ones that are pre-programmed. And what I like is the my gestures. I actually have it so that I do like a five finger sweep. I just push up. It closes and saves my application. So like when I'm done with my work, I just kind of slide it off the desk. But that's up to, you know, it's, it's all customizable per application. And you don't have to. Uh, I guess another thing that's kind of confusing a little bit, if you see, like I'm on functions and I have these extra added things. When I went to touch, I had nothing down here. 
So any changes I make to this are gonna be universal amongst all my programs. Unless I go and add in, like if I want specific touch just for Photoshop, I would add a Photoshop touch. Otherwise, everything would be universal. So now I'll just have whatever I change here will be just Photoshop and everything else will be all other. So that's, that's everything for touch. Then you have the pen. If you look, I just says a pro pen and a grip pen. That's only because on this machine I plugged, I plugged in this pen too. That's why it's showing too. This is the pro pen. It's the pen that comes with the uh, Cintiqs and some of our other products. It's just a little bit smaller. We talked about different pens. I mean, literally when you look at this, uh, if I showed them to both of you, you probably wouldn't know this difference. I know the difference because if you look side by side, this one's a tiny bit smaller. Also, this has the metal ring in it. But that's the pro pen. And this pen, so, and if you, did, if, you have, if you did have two pens and you weren't sure which pen you had, you can do this. If you look, I'm pushing on this, it's actually showing me my current pressure. If I had this pen selected, it's not gonna work. So that's a little trick I learned when I had to find out what pen, because the other thing too is we used to have uh, pen ID, so we'd have like 10 different pens in there. You didn't know which one you were working on, so you do that just by pushing down on it, it's showing you your current pressure. But just like everything else, so second line is tools. By having the grip pen selected, I can now change all my settings for, if you look, I changed, this is step back, somebody, let's see, I can hit default, now I'll change it. So double click and right click is the d default settings for the way the pen comes. In Photoshop, I have it so the front was X, that's how I was switching from the white uh, back and forth from the background to the foreground. And then this step back was in the pen just by clicking backwards. And that's only happening in Photoshop and with this pen. If I were to pick up my Pro Pen, they'd both be double click, right click. So just by picking the pen up and switching it, I would have different settings. The eraser, and then mapping is, uh, it gets a little technical, but it's just up to your, your computer. You can have it so that, this is absolute position, so this equals my monitor. With these, it makes it a little simpler. But what happens if you plug in to a machine with two, compu two monitors, dual monitor. <laughs> well, if you don't know, what's going to happen is those of you who, ha any who in the room has more than one monitor? Well, there's a couple, see, that's, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> By default, you plug it in, your, it, it splits your tablet in half. Now, if you have dual monitor and your tablet's in half, the whole point of this absolute position is so that I kind of resemble the screen and it looks right. So if I'm in half, and that's now my one computer monitor, that's my other one. Are those even close to being what the screen should look like? Not at all. But to make it simple, that's what we default to. What you can do is you can go in and, now if you had two monitors, it would show two monitors here, and it would show this map to both of them. You can lock down this force proportions. See, nothing happens because we're actually at a good, a good proportion right now. But if I locked in force proportions, it would take your tablet and cut about half of it off. Because it would make each one of these little monitors the right ratio. So that if you threw like a penny down and drew around it, it would actually be a circle on the screen. Where if you did it right now with your monitor in half and you put a penny down and you circled around it, it would be a giant oval on the screen. Because you're, it's mapping your screen to this. So by doing that, you can just, you can fix mapping errors by doing that. You can also uh, display toggle. So you can set it up so that your display toggle will be one monitor than the next monitor. And that would be a separate tab if I had more than one display on here. There'd be one more tab now called display toggle. Ah. And with the display toggle, you can say, uh, okay, by pushing this button, I'm now on the left monitor. I push it again, I'm on the right monitor. I push it again, I'm on both monitors. And that's the best way to, if you, if you have more than one monitor, that's what I would recommend you use, rather than just the default, which is gonna split you right down the middle. If you use it all the time that way, then maybe lock in the proportions. But you are, if, and if you're going to do that all the time, then maybe you're a candidate for somebody with a bigger tablet. Because now you're going to want that bigger area. Because you just took a medium tablet, cut it in half this way, and cut it almost in half this way. So you're working with two little tiny boxes, smaller than even our small tablet. So it's just, it comes down to user preference, what you want. By using display toggle, though, you're going to have it so this whole tablet hooks that monitor, that monitor, and then back to both. Yep, <laughs> that, and that's good. Most people don't, though, and that's why we went, I went over it. What, again, I'd recommend you do, unplug the first thing, but unplug the mouse. 
use the tablet for that first week. Once you've got the tablet down, wait a little while. Another key to that too, is how many of you are doing this for personal? Well, personal, well, a personal commitment to business. So how many people are doing this for a business? And how many personal? All right. Personal. all blends together. All blends together. All right, good. But the, the personal people, hopefully it's personal. You have no time constraints. It doesn't matter. The business, what I've seen many times before with the business is that it's for business. You have deadlines. You have to get things done. And, and what happens is they get, they get that tablet out there. They're like, oh, I saw that guy Dan use it. This is so great. They do the scoot. They do everything. Else. They, get, they get frustrated. And I can do this quicker with the mouse. They use the mouse. They come back a couple days later. Let me try that thing again. After like three or four times, they just use the mouse. They don't, they, the tablet becomes a very expensive mouse pad or it just sits to the side. Or they use it only when they want to make selections. I've seen that too. Don't let that happen, especially in that business. What I'd recommend in a business uh, world, business, wait till you have a slow week if that exists. If not, just know that you got to give me that three or four days, you're going to be negative productivity. You're going to go down a little bit. But know that the following week, you're going to be equal. And every week after that, you're going to get faster and faster. I mean, obviously, there'll be a cap where it stops. But for the most part, give me one week, and you'll be back to where you were. And then you'll just you'll continue to gain speed as you learn the tablet a little bit better and as you get better with the tablet. You'll get better with it. I hope all of you learned something. And I hope this was worthwhile. And thank you for coming. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.